Time to bring in the one and only Richard Southern from 680 News. Hey, Richard. Hey, Cynthia. And you know, a little birdie told me someone is celebrating something today, Cynthia. Yes. Happy yes, birthday to you. you. Thank you very much. Hope it's been you're a having a good day. day. You're, you're working on your birthday, but that's okay. We're glad you're here. I'm working, and you know, they brought me cake first thing in the morning. It doesn't get better than that. Uh, cake, cake for, for breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> Sign me up. That exactly. sounds good. Exactly. All right, down to business. You were all over this yesterday. This Uber cyber hack uh, continues today. And the company is mum on the Canadian impact. And we know, as you were saying yesterday, they were trying to cover all this up. Yeah, I mean, it's quite something. We got some more details on the cover up. But as we reported yesterday, Uber paid $100,000 to cover up a cyber attack that happened 13 months ago, which affected 57 million Uber users globally. They had their names and email addresses taken. No banking information, though, as far as we know. And sure, the question now is how many Canadians were affected? Uber not saying much. They issued this statement to me earlier today, and it reads, quote, the privacy of our riders and drivers is of paramount importance to Uber. That's why we're working closely with regulatory and government authorities globally, including the federal privacy commissioner's office here in Canada. Until we complete that process, we aren't in a position to get into more detail. New York Times reported earlier today that in addition to paying off the hackers, the Uber executives actually tracked them down. Cynthia had them sign a non-disclosure agreement and then covered up the payment on the balance sheet and the wow. question here now is 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 this going to lead to more firings uh, the former CEO Travis Kalanick who was around when this happened still on the board of directors so are they going to have to get rid of him and what does it mean for Lyft the competing ride-sharing company which is coming to Toronto in the coming weeks maybe they stand to benefit from all this and what is a company's responsibility to the clients who may potentially have been hacked I mean you would think that they they would have to disclose this to protect it, people they, they do under US law they were required Required to okay. do it, and so there are some investigations going on on the state levels uh, in the U.S. So I'm sure we'll hear more about that going forward. And I'm sure there will be more to this story yeah. as more and more layers are uncovered. Indeed. All right, thanks, Richard. Now, one of the biggest shopping days of the year is almost here, but there are a few items you may want to steer clear of on Black Friday, and you're looking at things of what not to buy. Yeah, because you know not everything is going to be you know rock bottom prices. So the fashion, uh, the shopping experts say uh, fitness equipment. You know, there's no secret, Cynthia. People resolve to get in shape after the mm -hmm. holidays. So the stores know that, and they roll out their big deals on fitness deals and uh, you know gym memberships in the new year. So wait for January for that. Uh, okay. Jewelry, uh, wait till mid or late January because that's when you see the Valentine's Day sales on jewelry. Hmm. Winter clothing, uh, plenty of clothing sure will be on sale on Friday, but the big deals they come in uh, January as well. And it's the same story, of course, with holiday decorations. The rock bottom prices on those happen after Christmas is all sure, over. Sure, now's a great time to get Halloween decorations. That's right? true, absolutely. We <laughs> can put it away for next year, yeah. Now, you know, we see all those scenes every year, particularly in the U.S., of the Black Friday mobs outside the stores and people struggling for these uh, crazy, precious deals. It? It's insane. Yeah. Uh, but you've been looking at stats on Black Friday violence. Yes. This I'm, I'm really curious about. And I want to stress, it is a U.S. Uh, story, and these are U.S. stats. We're much nicer, I think, or much more polite anyways up here in Canada. <laughs> So this is true, though. The Black Friday death count in the U.S. stands at 10. What? Over the past couple of years, Cynthia. I think this is going back 10 years. Yeah, 10 people. Um, 105 injured. As far as where the incidents happen, 57.1% uh, of the time it's at a Walmart. 17.9% of the time it's at a mall. What type of incidents are we talking about? Uh, well, trampling leads the way. 30% of incidents involve trampling. There was actually oh death involving that last year, believe it or not, Sin. 27.26.7% wow. involve shootings. 16.7% uh, involve car crashes. And rounding out the list, fist fights and pepper spray incidents. <laughs> but you know, more and more people are doing shopping online. In fact, I saw one report today that said maybe as much as 50% of mm -hmm. holiday shopping this year could be done online. So that might mitigate some of the black eyes on Black Friday. Apparently, it's safer. I can honestly honestly say there is nothing in any store that could possibly make me get into a fist fight. No, or make me get into a line. I don't think I've lined up for anything like Same. that. I, yeah, no. can't do it. I'm no. not one of those people that line up at midnight hoping nope. the door is open. No. We'll be in our uh, kicking back watching TV or something like that. You instead. got it. Yeah. All right, now a Canadian invention could be the top selling product this 
Black Friday. What's that? This is cool. This is actually something that rose from the ashes of Nortel, believe it or not. Everyone talking about the instant pot. And a man by the name of Robert Wang, he worked in Ottawa for Nortel. He got laid off in 2008, and he came up with this. It's basically an electric pressure cooker that also serves as a rice cooker, a steamer, a slow cooker, many functions. Uh, there's sensors to prevent burning and to make sure everything cooks properly. Uh, there's Bluetooth remote monitoring. It's a very high-tech device. Basically, though, you can cook meat from frozen in 30 minutes flat and u.s wow. food bloggers have been talking about this for the past couple of years it's just starting to take off now though it's predicted it will be amazon's top seller this black friday they they're predicting maybe half a million units could be sold so a real canadian success story there that's so. amazing what's it selling for I think it was a hundred oh where is it hundred and fifty dollars i think was the uh, the sale price on that section. okay so, so. he's going to be a multi billionaire soon yeah, Good that's for him. pretty cool that, you know, that's get amazing. laid off from Nortel and you come up with your own idea and it's top seller on Amazon. I love those inventions. I think they're just fascinating how you come up with the idea and it's suddenly successful. And it's really in tune right now. Everyone wants to eat quickly. You know, the slow cooker revolution's already in effect, so kind of playing on that. And, okay, so let's finish with a product that probably isn't going to appeal for everyone. Uh, you stumbled upon a smart dog Toilet. Yeah, you never know. People like their dogs. But tell me what you think of this. Basically, it offers a mess-free solution for dogs that have to go to the bathroom indoors. It's a, a self-cleaning pad that takes both liquids and solids that it then rolls up the waste. <laughs> Look at this. It rolls it up. Uh, hopefully, you're not eating your dinner here. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then it stores it away uh, in there, and then you sort of throw it out when the sheets are done. Uh, uh -huh. it, can, it contains 27 sheets. It uh, sells for $159.99. And uh, there's your solution if you got to leave your dog at home while you're going to work. Just, you know, let him do his business I, on the pad. I, I don't know, Richard. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think it would smell. I'll take the Instant Pot over that, I think. I'll take letting the dog hold it in until you get home and let him out. <laughs> Poor puppy. Poor puppy. All right, Richard. On that note, <laughs> thanks on very much. On that nice much. note. <laughs> Have a yeah. good night. Happy birthday. Thanks, Ed. All right. Thank you so much.